Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you beat the cleanup ULP mission on hard difficulty, if that was relevant. First and foremost, you want to make sure that you have plenty of snacks and armor with you before you attempt this mission. It will go a long way. Other than that, as you can clearly tell, we're already making our way to the control room because I do believe that you're able to fly a helicopter to a place. On your screen, you can see a juggernaut taking a little bit of a nap, but obviously we're going to be shooting him because for two reasons. Reason one is that he has a minigun, which means that we can then start using that minigun in the later stage in the mission. Make sure to pick up as many minigun ammo as you can because it's going to be useful. In this alleyway here, we're making our way through as I spot a fuse. If you want to know where all the fuse locations are, by the way, check out the video in the eye that's top right of your screen. Moving on with the rest of the video, we can see that in this location here, at the moment, there's not a juggernaut, but the locations are random and you can find one of them standing in a the corner there. If that is the case, make sure to shoot him. Continuing on through the corridor, there will be another juggernaut on your left here, possibly. So make sure to shoot him as well and again, pick up the minigun ammo. But the reason too as to why we're killing all these juggernauts here is because if we do so in the later stage in the mission when they wake up, spoiler alert, they will not be attacking you, making your escape through the silo a whole lot easier. And yes, in case you are paying attention to the gameplay, you can see that sometimes the minigun will stick to the hand and face through the wall. That meaning that you're not going to be able to grab any of the ammo. Continuing on with this juggernaut here, we can make a 180 turn. And behind this crate, there's another possible location of the juggernaut. Obviously kill him, pick up the ammo, and then move on yet again. In the next section, I'm going to show you a few other possible locations as well as for Juggernaut spawns. They can spawn in the doorway in front of the security checkpoint as well in the security checkpoint itself. Other than that, there is one final Juggernaut which will be on your left as you're about to make your way through the red door, which at that stage is still locked. Once the power is back on and you make your way through this red door, you can see a juggernaut either on your left like you're seeing right now, or you will see one right away. You don't really have to worry about bumping into them or making too much noise or having to be stealthy, considering that they're just simply deactivated and they will not attack you until a later stage. There will be two other juggernauts as well, which I'm showing on screen right now. As you get out of the red door, you want to take a left and take up all the way on these stairs and just keep following the path that I'm taking towards the middle section of the second level. Here you will be able to find one, and then very shortly after, the second one. Killing these two again will make your life a little bit easier. Now the next section is not super interesting. The reason as to why is because they're just simply going to hack two different servers and that's pretty much it. If you want a pro tip to make your life a little bit more comfortable is that you can just simply go up to the servers and then just put away your phone and the hack will still continue. As long as you're in the yellow circle, you're going to be totally fine. Do make sure to kind of follow the route that I'm taking in terms of which server to take first because of the reason that I'm about to mention. As soon as you're done with the second server, two juggernauts will spawn. The best way to go about this is to basically kind of hang back and wait until the first juggernaut makes their way up to the stairs there. Take cover behind the servers here and make sure that your body is mostly covered on the left side there. That way the juggernaut will not be able to hit you and you'll be very easily able able to kill him. If you need to make sure to zoom in a little bit further with your minigun, make sure to do so because obviously you're not moving anyways. For the next one, you obviously want to do the exact same thing as you can clearly tell. Some might argue that I shouldn't be able to shoot through this wall, but I guess I did. Nice and safe, barely any health lost. Now the next two servers, you don't really have to worry about too much, you simply can just hack them. And again, after that fourth and final server, more juggernauts will spawn. A total of two will, once again, but they won't be triggered until you make your way down to the stairs. Sometimes though, there is a possibility that they will already be there or about to come that way, especially if you're restarting the checkpoint, the juggernauts will be there instantly. So again, make sure to leave your body as much to the left as you can while still being able to shoot. 
as you can tell by the footage as soon as i set my foot on the very last step of the stairs the juggernauts will trigger and they will show up on your minimap so make sure to pay close attention to your minimap to make sure that you can see where the juggernauts are located so you can position yourself well as you can tell by the footage i've slightly adjusted my movement there so just about in the gap of the wall there i was able to shoot through and then kill the juggernaut the next one was a little bit further away and required a little bit of caution and movement you have to keep in mind that even though you have reinforced armor and you also have like snacks and armor your health will be depleted relatively quickly if one of these juggernauts gets a shot on you once you kill the second and final juggernaut you can then start making your way towards the red doors again where we enter the area with then make sure to shoot both red doors because that way you can open the doors without having to actually walk through them making it a little bit safer to go through you want to wait until the juggernaut on the right there starts running away from you obviously shooting him in the back there will be another juggernaut behind the checkpoint so make sure to shoot him in the face with your minigun so you can then start slowly but surely make your way through the next area now there's a big heads up here there is a crate on the right there where i'm currently shooting at there is a possibility of a juggernaut being in there or just barging out of so make sure to stick to the left so you can avoid being shot by him right away this way you'll be able to hug the wall on the left there and shoot the two juggernauts that are going to be shooting you. Again, I want to stress that the spawns can be random and your situation might be slightly different or it might be the same depending on how many times you're replaying the mission. As we finish off the final juggernaut within the area, we can then start making our way through the corridors yet again, making sure to keep a close eye on our mini-map to see any oncoming juggernauts. Make sure to be fully stocked up on snacks and armor as you go through the section. As you can tell by the footage, there was a juggernaut that kind of caught me off guard, nearly killing me. Luckily, the reinforced armor will offer you more protection than usual, which is also the reason as to why you're walking a little bit slower. Continuing on with walking through corridors and shooting juggernauts, juggernauts for fun one of the things you can also practice is shooting before the juggernaut is even around the corner you know the good old-fashioned pre-fire the reason as to why is because that way you're already shooting the juggernaut before he even has time to react and start shooting at you meaning that you avoid possibly a whole lot of damage as a good example, if it would have started firing a little bit earlier there, I would have killed the Juggernaut before he did even any damage to me. As we killed the last Juggernaut, we can then make our way through the final corridor and head towards the silo exit and take the elevator. Upon exiting the elevator and having seen the small cutscene, you will have to kill this helicopter to make sure that you can actually make the jump without dying and falling to your death. When this helicopter is down with the remaining bullets of your minigun, you can then start jump down and then obviously instantly deploy your parachute. Now you could decide to get rid of your parachute mid-air and then start skydiving to go a little bit quicker. But for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to stick to parachuting and try to see if I can score some extra style points by shooting the helicopter out of the air by using one of the oldest features in the game that doesn't really get utilized all that often. But damn, it did feel damn good to shoot down a helicopter in mid-air while in the parachute. Yeah. Anyways, when we are on the ground, we want to make sure to go to this location on your map. And it will be good practice to mark it down if you don't know where exactly it is. Because beside the fact that pedestrians in this game do not like you whatsoever, as you can clearly tell by this exact footage, you will also know that you can go to the location in advance and while escaping Clifford's mercenaries. Now, if you are lucky, there will only be like one or two mercenaries left. And you can shoot them at the location that you're meant to be, saving you a little bit of time once those guys are dead you can just simply stand still maybe walk a little bit closer to the guy there and hey presto mission complete that is all there is to it leave a like if you enjoyed or found it useful subscribe for more and if you really like what you see on the channel make sure to become a member like chloe robert and kfc chicken thank you again for watching and i'll see you all later